In the last video we saw how the i3 13100F beat the i7 9700F. So this time we will spice things up a bit with this i7 10700K. In comparison to the i3 it has double the cords, double the threads, higher clock, more cash. It has everything on paper. Starting things off we got Call of Duty Warzone and man. We can clearly see that my aim is bloody dog water, <laughs> but also that the difference in frame rate on 1080p low settings with any type of upscaling turned off was very minimal. I honestly couldn't tell a difference between the PCs if I was blindfolded. Also, I forgot to mention that for these tests we are using a real world GPU, RTX 3060 Ti. Other YouTubers test everything but 4080s, 4090s and don't get me wrong, they clearly show what every CPU is capable of at its max. But bro, we broke this over here. In the real world, I don't see anyone using this i3 or even i7 for that matter with even a 3080, I guess. So if you like this to change, let me know your thoughts. That's just how I think, I guess. Now, in Cyberpunk on 1080p medium settings with no FSR or ray tracing, we got these benchmark results. And as always, when walking on these busy streets, the actual FPS is lower than the in-game benchmark test. But wait, wait a minute, smart car in the hood. Oh, hell no. Off. On GTA 5, thanks to this legend in the comment section, now we know why PCs stutter slightly, as you can see in the minimum figures on 1080p very high settings. And I honestly think that after today's video we will stop testing GTA 5 on higher end PCs. It's not a challenging game anymore, sadly. So today we are back at Grand Theft Auto 5. <laughs> and now for something really fresh. Payday 3. And I gotta admit, the i3 here felt much, much smoother for some reason. On 1080p high settings, I got these benchmark results. As the game is still in its beta stage, I'm really happy that we got over 60 FPS because dudes on Reddit with i9s and 4070 Ti's are getting like under 60 FPS. So we have to be happy about the results. Uh, can someone explain perhaps what's going on in Fortnite? Anyways, both processors on 1080p medium settings performed really well here, but that i7 seems to have gotten a slight lead. And quickly before we continue with the gaming benchmarks, take a look at the Cinebench R23. I found it to be really interesting, cause the i3 crushed the i7 in single core, and the i7 obviously beat it in multi-core, but not by much. And in 3D Mark Time Spy, i7's lead was much higher, and it won in the overall score. On Forza 5, I intentionally set the settings to tending to be extreme presets, so our 3060 Ti would obviously bottleneck, and the i3 13100F managed to get more FPS than the i7. That's crazy though. Finally, we move on to CSGO and you would not believe this guys, but the i3 won. <laughs> so there you have it guys, i3 13100F is an underrated gem in the PC world which compares to or even beats i7s with double the cores in more than half of the games. But if this i3 thinks that it has no enemies, wait for what I have planned next. Subscribe.